It's the NFL on EA Sports. And this one features Josh Jacobs. He's the NFL's ultimate red zone back and your leader in rushing touchdowns. It's the Packers and the Texans, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Packer team as we interplay here. They've got all W's on the ledger so far, a perfect 6-0. Yeah, still a long way to go in this season, but they're showing everyone early on that they intend to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Texans, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. And the opening kickoff will not be returned as that will be a touchback. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's offensive rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. To Mixon on the check down. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. You look at this Packers defense. They were excellent a week ago in the victory over Arizona. Yeah, they pitched a shutout in that game, didn't they? And those don't come around all that often in the NFL. The ability to keep someone out of the end zone and also from kicking one through the post. Well done. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Right. And Stroud now to throw. Packer pressure, and down he goes. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Mixon running right. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. This defense for the Packers, they were excellent a week ago in the victory over Arizona. Yeah, we're definitely in top form and pitched a shutout as a matter of fact. That's the cherry on top of a great week of preparation. And you know what? These guys are eager to keep it going. And they get to Stroud. Nowhere to go, and he goes down. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. And they're picking up right where they left off with the shutout that they pitched last week. A huge part of that, this pass rush. They know how to get after people. Offensively, good luck finding some answers right now. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. This is taken around the 12. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. So the Packers make their way out for the first time, and it's Jordan Love that has the keys to the car here in his fifth season as a pro and second as a starter. And Love established himself as a legitimate franchise quarterback a season ago. And let's not forget... He had to exhibit a lot of patience, waiting for his opportunity to become the man. And once he got that chance, he hit the ground running. The question now from the rest of the league, can he sustain that success? The Packers certainly believe he will. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So first and 10 now from the 30. 
Once again, it's Jacobs. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. A check on Jacobs from a week ago. The hat trick plus one. Four trips to the end zone with his legs. And partner, you know how all the guys do when they do that little symbol now about eating, right? Keep feeding me, feeding me. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. And that'll be caught. With a quick slant, good for eight and a first. The Packers at 6-0. and oh, What a start to the season for them. And they have certainly got it rolling as of late. Winners of six in a row. And I think this is where, as a head coach, you show your team some trust. Instead of just talking about winning, you know, the very next game, you point out to them, we're on a nice run here. And if we keep doing this, we'll be playing at home in the postseason. And we know that that could ride us all the way to the Super Bowl if we get that done. You look at the defense for these Texans. Now they're currently 21st, Charles, in the NFL against the run. And when people talk about facing a challenge, they are certainly getting one in this ball game because they are facing the number one rushing unit in the NFL, which means this is going to be a contest they've got to be prepared for from the first snap. Love now. He's going to launch this deep for Watson. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Packers. Christian Watson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Packers get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they call his number in this one. Carlson's extra point up and good, and it's now a 7-0 game. So the Packer kickoff team set to go as they will kick this one away. And no thought of bringing this one out. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll begin the drive at the 30. The Texans' offense, led by their running back, headed out for the second possession. And as we check out the NFL leaders and rushing touchdowns coming into the weekend, see a familiar name there near the top of the leaderboard, currently second in that category. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets them back now for second down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. Throwing now is Stroud. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Preston Smith, he continues to wreak havoc in the offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. Here is third and quite a ways. Here's Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. And the field position doesn't get much better than this. They'll have it first and goal at the eight-yard line. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well, and this time it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And they start in the best of all positions, first and goal. The defense gets him the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. Here's Jacobs. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. You know, when this offense gets down here near the end zone, they're going to turn to their bell cow. This guy's been a touchdown machine all year. Excellent job stopping him there on first down. Jacobs is in. Touchdown, Packers. 
So the rushing touchdowns continue to stack up, C.D. That now 15 for him on the year. And give him a ton of credit for staying healthy, being a smart runner, and is showing just how important he's been to his team. He's got to be their MVP at this point in the season, and those votes may have been turned into league MVP votes when it's all said and done. Carlson on for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he will be taken down here as the first quarter of play will come to an end. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got a first and 10 at their own 25. Houston's offense already at the line set to get going. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Rolling to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Preston Smith, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Well, Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. Yeah, and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Stroud working out of the gun. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Here's Tommy Townsend now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Taken in at the 22. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Packers now to take over. Their win streak at six coming in and counting as they've got the lead right now beginning this drive first and 10. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. So this game, Charles, you know, we talk about potential unbeaten seasons a lot. It feels like every year at some point in the season we talk about that. But this is one of those games where if you're unbeaten, you got to be careful. You can't take this one too lightly. You're exactly right about that. And by rights, this should be a cakewalk. Almost a week off. Let the starters run up the score in the first half. Backups get to play in the second. But you and I both know the funny things sometimes happen when you think this way. So it's incumbent upon the starters to really play well to make it work for this team. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. 
Brought down on the play by the linebacker, Christian Harris. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. From the 47 now, they work with a second and seven. Switching things up, they'll throw it now with Jordan Love. Looking deep here for Dobbs. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Packers. Romeo Dobbs, his first touchdown on the year. And the Packers have moved out in front by three touchdowns. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Now Carlson for the extra point. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive, four plays. And that drive all capped off with a Romeo Dobbs touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Texans offense and running back Joe Mixon set to take over once more. And he's run the ball well to this point in the season, right there in the mix for NFL leaders in rushing. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession. But I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Mixon is into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play, and they actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21 to 7. One play, two plays, touchdown. That's all it took there. A very short and sweet drive that got him in the end zone. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Packers with a football here late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to go, still time to try to put a drive together to add to their lead, should they so choose. Ready? Throwing. Love. Looking deep here for Dobbs. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Romeo Dobbs. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Packers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Well, that is certainly a deflator right there defensively. Their guys just came off of a touchdown drive. They're back in the game, and then bam, they give up a touchdown one play later. How about that? And the momentum, which seemingly had shifted the other direction, thought we might be seeing a comeback. <laughs> that momentum right back the other way. Well, that is certainly not complimentary football that we saw right there. The defense is supposed to help their offense not give up another touchdown.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And with a three-score deficit staring him in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. Stroud. Dumps it off to Mixon. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Stroud to throw it. Pass thrown right back to Joe Mixon. Finding space at the 40. And he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now Stroud. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Stroud looking to throw. Going deep for Diggs. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. On third down, Mixon. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. So we're at halftime here at Lambeau with the Packers taking the lead to the break as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you two in a bit. For now, plenty of early game action around the NFL to get you caught up on, so let's get to it. We'll start up in the Twin Cities, Minnesota hosting Detroit in the NFC North. And in the late stages of the first half, it's the Lions who are out in front. Jared Goff has a touchdown pass to his favorite target, Amon Ross St. Brown. From there, we're off to check out another game. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. A couple of touchdown passes there for Joe Burrow. Finally, we're off to Atlanta to check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And that game all square as they take on the visiting Seahawks. It was the Packers' leading man, quarterback Jordan Love, who turned in a solid performance in that first half. He threw a first-quarter touchdown pass, then two more in the second quarter, a three-touchdown half, and he may just be getting started. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up, ready to go. The other has been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Packers offense and quarterback Jordan Love heading back out onto the field. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around. And, and he works free. Missed. Missed. This will not go down. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 54 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. You want to be a 
So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here we go. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But it looks like they're ready to go. They'll come up facing third and five. Here's Love. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. That's Aziz Al Shair getting through for the sack that time. On now is the Packers punter. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Football 101, you've got to let the guy catch the ball. You have to know the ball is there. You have to know it's arrived. Otherwise, you're going to get flagged every time. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Inside handoff to Mixon. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. Stroud, he'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves them with a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. For the Packers offense and Romeo Dobbs getting ready to go back to work. And he was pretty much unguardable in that first half. You see the numbers there as they try to add to him here in this third quarter. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a give to Jacobs running right. Takes it to about the 37. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Jacobs going to try the middle. And this will be a Packers first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Ready. 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 Here's a handoff to Jacobs. Yeah. 
And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 103 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Lambeau Field, one of the best home field advantages in the NFL, no doubt. And they're a happy bunch here as the Packers lead third quarter. Here's Jacobs from the gun. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. On the 30, here's second and four. Let's go. Set. They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's Packer football here as they've got the lead as well to begin the fourth quarter. Ready. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Set. Ready. Set. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. And Jacobs, I don't think he's going to get there. No, it appears they're going to mark him short of the first. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Come on, set. Ready? They go with Jacobs. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And this Texans defense stands tall. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear a peep of protest out of them. That's just who they are. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game is played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Devontae Wyatt getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. The one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way, and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. It's complete to Diggs. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. This one left side caught by Collins. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Back to throw, Stroud. Another one caught by Collins. So the completion good for seven there. And that's gonna bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he gets it down to the 32. 
Now a pause for the injury, and that is as Joe Mixon clearly in some discomfort following that last play. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll look to throw again. And Diggs has it. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Stroud will look to throw once more. Forced out to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Preston Smith, that is one he will remember. It's sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Dance into it, and the pressure gets to him again. Preston Smith, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Stroud. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. Uh, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. 117 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. From the 38 now, here's a second and four. They'll run right here with Jacobs. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 17 yards on the play there as the Packers have the first down as well. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Ready? On the handoff, this is Jacobs. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He figured that one out and made a really nice play. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Now, well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And he pushed it. Pushed it from short distance. Wide right. It's no good. And they will not be able to add on to their 20-point lead. Wow, that qualifies as a bad miss because anything inside of 40 should be automatic. That's a big mistake right there. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And they, unfortunately, are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. And they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Kind of a strange ball game, Charles. We did not have a single point by either team after half. A really a defensive clinic by both sides in half number two. Wasn't that just beautiful to watch? 
Come on, man. Come over to the dark side with me. Wasn't that fun to see these defenses holding sway, right? Making sure they're controlling the game in the second half. It lets you know that you've got to score points when you can. You never know when offenses might go a little bit dry and you need those points from earlier. So for Green Bay, their winning ways continue as they get it up to 7-0. and And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for the Texans, they dip to 2-5 and five now with the loss. And they'll get a chance.